challenge of the Yukon. <laughs> it's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. Hun King, hun, you husky. <laughs> Gold. Gold discovered in the Yukon. A stampede to the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush. With Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. The first blizzard of the year caught Harry Esmond when he was only halfway to Beaver City. He knew that he must travel light if he were to make it to town, so he cached his gold dust and most of his supplies. Then he struggled on, fighting the blinding snow with every step. Finally, he lost the trail. Alone in the great pine forest, his sense of direction gone completely. Still, there was nothing to do but keep going. Somewhere, somehow, through the night and the heavy drifts, his strength was ebbing. He could hardly place one foot in front of the other. When he saw the light, a cabin, he staggered toward it. He reached the door and raised his arm to knock, but the effort was too much for him. He pitched forward, hitting the door with his head as he dropped to the ground. A moment later, the door opened. Hey, shut that door. I thought I heard something out here. It's a storm. No. Oh, it's, it's a man, a traveler, almost done for. Come on, give me a hand with him. You better ask Mike if it's all right. Mike's asleep in the other room. We can't let him freeze to death. Come on. Uh, this is your idea, remember? All right, so it's my idea. On <laughs> the blankets by the stove. Yeah. There. Close the door, Charlie. Yeah, all right. What's the matter, Easy? Matter? The way you're looking at that hombre. You know him? I can't say I do. What's going on out here? Well, this wasn't my idea, Mike. Easy heard a noise outside, and when he opened the door, this guy was lying in the snow. That's right. I made Charlie help me bring him in. My orders were to keep everybody away from the door. Oh, the kid can't hurt us, Mike. He might be a Mountie. They don't wear fancy uniforms in this weather. He's nothing but a prospector. Uh, wonder if he's got any dust. Yeah, here's a poke. Not more than a couple of ounces on it. Well, get rid of him. You're loco. Who's giving the orders around here? You and Charlie drag him out to the trail and leave him there. Item one, that's too much work. Item two, that's too much trouble. Let him lie where he is till morning. Give him a little food and send him on his way. We'll be heading north tomorrow. Not if the storm keeps up. If the storm keeps up, he won't be leaving either. Take it easy. You and you take it easy. It's good advice most of the time. Yeah, you're not as famous as you think, Mike. We're a long way from Whitehorse. Nobody knows you in this neck of the woods. Got it. Got it. Had it. Hey, Trouble. he's coming too. Two. Two thousand. What's he saying? I had it. Too heavy to carry. Come back and get it later. After the storm. Gotta keep going. Travel light. Hey, he hid some gold. Yeah, it's just talk. Two thousand. That makes sense. No sled or dog team. Two thousand in gold and make a hefty package. He'd have to cash it someplace. He's out of his head. We'll find about that when he gets up. Aren't you in enough trouble? Sure, we're in trouble, but we wouldn't be if we had two thousand in gold. That'd be enough to get us all the way back to the States. I'm not going with you, Mike. What's that? You heard what I said. This is where we split up. I'm going back to Whitehorse and face the music. Well, you'll go to jail, easy. We were all seen leaving the express office. That's the only thing the law has against me. So you're ratting, huh? Now, look, you don't have to worry. I'll stay right here until you and Charlie get across the border. Then I'll go back. You're going through with one more job first. No, Mike. This prospector. We need this gold. Forget his gold. Get out of the country while the getting's good. You're covered, easy. Why can't you? His gun, Charlie. Oh, easy, he won't make any trouble. Get his gun. Oh, whatever you say. Now tie him up. Oh, my. Tie him up first and then the prospector. 
Easy wants to stay here. All right, let him. Let him stay behind without any supplies, without any chance to get wood for the stove. Let him freeze to death. Tomorrow morning, we'll load the prospector on our sled and make him show us where his cash is. And we get rid of him and go on. Easy, why don't you change your mind? Tie him up! Okay, okay. Easy was tied hand and foot and forced to lie down on the floor. The sleeping prospector was also bound. Then Charlie and Mike retired for the night in the cabin's second room. Easy didn't sleep. Toward morning, he heard Harry muttering. Rope. What's, what's the idea? <laughs> Easy rolled across the floor to his side. <laughs> Harry. Uh, who's that? It's Easy. Easy. Keep your voice down. Oh, oh, where are we? What's the idea of the ropes on my feet? And... Wait, you're tied up too. Yeah. I'll explain. Well, I, I, all I remember is a storm, a, a cabin. You just made it to the door. We got you inside. We? Charlie and I. That was before Mike woke up and got tough. Well, who were Charlie and Mike? <laughs> Ex-friends of mine. What have you been up to during the past two years? Let's not go into that. Well, how do you happen to be here? Uh, I'll have to tell you that. Uh, are Charlie and Mike crooked? <laughs> As a dog's hind leg. Oh, easy. Why? Why do you get mixed up with such people? Hmm? Birds of a feather. That isn't true. Man never had a better brother. You worked hard all the time I was growing up. It wasn't until I didn't need your help anymore. Bygones, that... Harry. Let's forget them. But we can't forget about Mike and Charlie. Now, I'm going to tell you the truth, the whole truth. They talked me into helping them with an express company job down in Whitehorse. What? Uh, a robbery? Robbery. But everything went wrong. We were seen and... Well, we just managed to get out of town by the skin of our teeth. Then you're wanted by the law. That's right. For attempted robbery, that's all. Well, that's enough. It's different with Mike and Charlie. After we left White Horse, I found out they were wanted for murder. A killing down at Lake LaBarge. And you stuck with them? <laughs> you know me. Take it easy. I figured I'd split up with them after we got out of the country. When you showed up, I decided it had to be right now. Seeing you made me ashamed of myself. I'm glad. I'd have been smarter if I kept my mouth shut. Now we're both in the same boat. Uh, well, what are they going to do with us? They'll leave me here tomorrow morning. They plan to take you with them. Where? To your cash. You were talking about it in your sleep last night. Oh, I, I got 2,000 in Yeah, case. yeah, I know. And so do they. We've got to get out of here before they wake up. But how? I've been working at the ropes on my wrists. I've loosened them some, and you may be able to work them free. Turn over. <clears throat> That's it. Now then, see if you can untie the knot. Get closer. I, I can't reach you. How's that? Yeah, yeah. I may be able to. Yeah. Good. Desperately, Harry worked on the ropes that tied his brother's wrists behind his back. At last, Easy was able to slip his hands free. Moments later, the ropes around his ankles were untied. Then he proceeded to free Harry. All right, still. Uh, that's it. Thanks. Get up. Quiet. You're in the next room. Have you got a gun? No, Mike has it. We won't bother with guns. There's snowshoes over there. A pair for each of us. The storm's let up some. We can make it to Beaver City in a couple of hours. You know the way? Yeah. All right, let's get out of here. At 9 o'clock the following morning, Mike and Charlie drove up to the general store in Beaver City. Oh, well there. Oh, yes, please. Whoa. Come on. Yeah, I'm with you. Well, good morning, gents. Isn't it good morning? Well, the storm's let up some. How'd you find the trail? Terrible. All the way from Dawson. You uh, had any more travelers come in this morning? Nope, you were the first. But I'm expecting Sergeant Preston. Of course, he'll be coming from the other direction, from the Indian village. If you're traveling in that direction, you'll have a trail broken for you. Sergeant Preston? Shut up. You uh, sure nobody's come into town ahead of us? Uh, 
There were signs. Yeah, and I haven't seen anybody. Men on snowshoes. Yeah, now, they must be tough ones traveling in such weather, but I've got an idea you've made a mistake. <clears throat> well, good morning, Mrs. Flanagan. Good morning to you, Judd. Oh, I'll put the kettle on and we'll have a cup of tea while we're waiting. Waiting? For Sergeant Preston, of course. Eh, uh, you don't like to wait for your news, do you, Mrs. Flanagan? Sure, and I don't. This morning, it's I who has the news, though. And who would these gentlemen be? Yeah, travelers, ma'am. Oh, uh, yeah, just passing through. But uh, if we were to stop for a while, is there any place in town where we could put up? Well, there's my place. The best boarding house in the Yukon. Uh, that's the, uh, the White House, the edge of town? That's it. Only I'd have to disappoint you today, gentlemen. I've just rented me last room. And who do you think, Judd? Eh? Young Harry Esmond came into town at the break of dawn. You don't see? And his brother with him. And it's those two who want to see the sergeant. They're having a bit of a sleep now. And I said I'd come down here and wait for the sergeant and bring him back to the house as soon as he arrives. Eh, what's, uh, what's Harry's business with the Northwest Mounted? Sure, now, and the poor boy was so dead tired, I didn't question him. Uh. But we'll find out soon enough. Let's go, Charlie. Yeah. You're leaving? Uh, we have to. Without a cup of tea? Uh, thank you, ma'am. Outside the store, Charlie climbed on board the sled and Mike turned the team around. Hush! Hey! Hey there! Hey! Now, hush! 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 The snow was letting up a little as they drove down the street. When they reached the edge of the town, it had practically stopped. Mike halted the team in front of Mrs. Flanagan's boarding house. Oh, there. Oh, oh, oh. Go on inside, Charlie. Door's unlocked. Quiet now. I wonder which room. We'll soon find out. Parlor. Here. Come on. Yeah. That's easy in the first bed. The prospect will whoop at the window. You don't want to hurt him. We want him to be able to talk. To put up a fight. If there's anybody upstairs... We'll find out. Yeah. Charlie returned a few minutes later and reported. Not a soul in the house but them. Use your knife on easy. I'll wrap the prospector over the head with the barrel of my gun. Good enough. Oh! Harry, look out! At Easy's cry, Harry leaped from his cot, but Mike was already on top of him. Mike tried to bring his gun down on Harry's head, but the younger man ducked the blow and lashed out with a right. It caught Mike on the chin and drove him back, but then both Charlie and Mike closed in on Harry. He stood with his back to the wall and fought desperately. Still, the odds were too much for him. Mike found his opportunity, and the barrel of his gun crashed down on the side of Harry's head. The young prospector slumped to the floor. Uh, uh, now what? Uh, did you finish easy? Yeah, I'll see. Yeah. yeah, he's done for. We'll load them both on our sled. Get rid of easy outside of town. The cabin's a good place. Then we'll make the prospector tell us where his gold is. Come on. Easy first. All right. <coughs> At the store, Judd and Mrs. Flanagan drank their tea and talked for the next two hours. Sergeant Preston reached town at 11 o'clock, and after discussing the weather and the condition of the trail with Judd, he and King accompanied Mrs. Flanagan back to her boarding house. Oh, what a blessing the snow has stopped. <laughs> Step in, Sergeant. Come on, King. <laughs> What's he sniffing at? Some team burrowed out in front here. You see where they were in the snow there. A team? Glory be. Now, who could it have been? Oh, and me front door unlocked. I don't like that. Don't like what? Those two men. They could have stopped here on their way out of town, couldn't they? Well, I don't know whom you're talking about, Mrs. Flanagan. Inside, gang. Well, I don't know their names. A couple of travelers passing through. They stopped at the store a couple of hours ago. Only for a few minutes, you understand. But they did find out where me boarding house was. And with me there, and not here... <gasps> I'll have a look in the kitchen to make sure they didn't strip the cupboard. You'd never seen the men before? No, Sergeant, I had not. Oh, everything seems to be in order here. Well, they may have only stopped out in front for a few minutes to adjust their load. Oh, maybe they did. Sit down, Sergeant, and make yourself comfortable. 
I'll wake Harry and his brother. Their room's just down the hall. I've never met Harry, have I? What's his last name? It's Esmond. Esmond? Mrs. Flanagan, does he call his brother easy? He does that. You know him? There's a circular out on him. He's wanted in Whitehorse for robbery. No, Harry's a fine boy. He may be. I'm talking about his brother. You have no idea what they wanted to see me about? They were a little secretive, Sergeant. The two men you saw at the store, did one of them have a scar above his right eye? Why, well, yes. Is the store locked? There's no key for it, but it's only the proper thing to knock. Sergeant, there's no one in here. There's been a fight. Oh, me beautiful furniture. And there on the blanket, a stain. It's blood, Sergeant. I'll see you later. Where are you going? As you said, Mrs. Flanagan, what a blessing the snow stopped. I'll be able to follow those sled tracks outside. Come on, gang. Five minutes later, the sergeant headed out of town and into the forest. On, gang! March! Since they were following a broken trail, King had been harnessed, and the great dog set a fast pace. Still, it took half an hour to reach the trapper's cabin in the woods, the cabin where Harry had collapsed the night before. The sergeant stopped his sled at the edge of the clearing by stepping on the brake. Easy, King. Keep the team quiet. King was unharnessed. Then he and the sergeant crossed the clearing at a run. With his gun ready, the sergeant kicked open the door. There was a man lying on the floor in the far corner of the room. The sergeant knelt beside him. From the description on the circular, this must be easy, Esmond King. He's still alive. We'll do what we can for him. The sergeant got his first aid kit from the sled and proceeded to care for the wounded man. It was a knife wound in the back, but there was no hole in the parka that had been wrapped around him. He must have got this at Mrs. Flanagan's while he was asleep, probably. But we can save him, boy. The wound bandaged, Easy was placed on the cot and covered with blankets. The sergeant started a fire in the stove. And as the cabin grew warm, Easy stirred a little. Uh, yes, he'll live. Harry. Esmond. Huh? Where's your brother? I got him. Who? Mike and Charlie. Mike Danvers and Charlie Morgan, <laughs> wanted for murder at Lake LaBarge. The men who were in on that white horse robbery with you? Yeah. They killed your brother? I don't know. They will kill him after he shows him where his cash is. Esmond, I'm Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted Police. Try to tell me everything that happened. I was... I was going to give myself up, Sergeant. You were at Mrs. Flanagan's boarding house. Mike and Charlie came there? Yeah. One of them stuck a knife in you? Charlie. Harry fought. They... They knocked him out. Loaded us both on their sled. And they... dumped me off here. I... I could hear them talking. They, they thought I was dead. Oh, Harry, they'll kill him when they get his gold. Do they know where it is? Yeah, maybe he told them. Do you know where it is? No, no. Yeah, I can't follow their trail. I'm going after them. You'll be all right if you just lie quiet. Take it easy. Yeah. That's me. Come on, King. It had begun to snow again as they left the cabin. And the sergeant didn't harness King, letting him work as a loose lead to concentrate on the trail. The sled tracks were covered now, but the great dog never faltered. On and on through the forest he ran, an hour, two hours. And then suddenly he stopped short. There were men a little way ahead. The sergeant went forward on foot with King by his side. From tree to tree they moved. The sergeant caught a glint of metal from the underbrush to his right. He dropped to the ground as a shot rang out. The sergeant raised himself slightly to fire and return. A rifle spoke from the left. The sergeant was hit, but he managed to roll down into a snow-covered gully and lay there for a moment, getting his breath. It isn't too bad, King. Creased my side, but shouldn't interfere with my shooting. He crawled to the top of the gully, searching the trees for a target. The men showed themselves for a brief second when they fired. The sergeant caught one of them. And then there was no more shooting. The man had moved on. King told his master that by scrambling into full view at the top of the gully. His master didn't follow him. Sorry, boy. I, I can't make it. Have to rest. Take it easy. King crouched beside his master and looked into his face. There must be something he could do to help. He leaped to his feet and ran back through the forest to the sled. He nosed through the box at the rear until he found the case the sergeant had used so recently in the cabin. The case he always used when someone was badly hurt. 
King took it gently between his teeth and ran back to the sergeant. What do you have there, boy? <laughs> the, the first aid kit? Oh, you're a wonder, King, but I'm afraid I can't... Still, if I get out of this park, I might be able to bandage it and stop the flow of it. Well, that's it, King. Take hold of the sleeve. Pull, boy. Oh. It took a superhuman effort for the sergeant to dress his wound. And when he had finished with a parka pulled back over his shoulder, he was exhausted. I just have to take it easy. King wasn't satisfied. Once more, he returned to the sled. But this time, he insisted on the team following him back to the sergeant's side. <laughs> Oh, what? You want me to climb aboard? Well, why not? I can rest just as well on the sled as I can here. Those blankets look good. Let me take hold of your harness, King. That's it. There we go, boy. Oh, wonderful. I can get my strength back lying here, and I can still keep moving. After them, boy. Home, King. While the sergeant was giving himself first aid and gathering his strength, Charlie and Mike had returned to their sled, where Harry, tied hand and foot, was barely conscious. Told you there was somebody following us, didn't I? You still don't know if it was a Mountie or not. Whoever it was, he's done for. You don't even know that. Should have gone over there and made sure. Yeah, why didn't you? Well, I was hit. <laughs> a scratch on your wrist and you take off like a reindeer. That's why I didn't make sure the Mountie was finished. We'd just like you to run off with the sled. Maybe we should go back. Ah, I hit him good. Now we'll settle with this hombre once and for all. Wake up, Ezra. Don't, don't hit me again. You ready to talk? I, uh, yes. Where's the cash? Uh, it's a big pine, blasted by lightning. Uh, a big rock near it. North of here? Uh, yeah, let's get rid of him so I can ride the sled. Well, keep him with us until we get the gold. And you'll run behind with me. All right, you mutt. You've had enough rest. Up on your feet. Come on, up. Come on. Bush! Bush on! Bush! On they drove to the north, Mike forcing the pace all the way. It was getting dark when they saw the great pine which had been struck by lightning. That it? Yeah. Where are you, Husky? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, where's the rock? Near the foot of the tree. Got the ropes on his feet, Charlie. Okay. Get up. I can't. Come on, come on, on your feet. This way. It's just about here. Of course, the rock is covered with snow. Find it, Charlie. Where's the snow aside? Yeah, okay. You've lied, isn't it? No. Right next to the rock. I wrap my supplies in the dust and a piece of tarpaulin. You'll find it. Hey, hey, here's the rock. Which side, Esmond? It's the right. Yeah, yeah, there's something here. Stop folding. Open it up. Never mind the supplies. Where's the gold? Yeah, this bag must be it. It's heavy. Let's see. Yeah, sure. Uh-huh. Must be a good 2,000 there. There's plenty of dust. Can't be far from the border, Mike. We'll drive on to Circle City and have a celebration, huh? Yeah, some unfinished business here. Uh, uh, don't shoot me. Let me go. You'll be safe once you're across the border. How can I stop you? Let me go. Yeah. Why not? Uh, what? You're absolutely right. You can't stop us from crossing the border. Why shouldn't we let you go? Uh, you will? Cut the ropes on his hands, Charlie. Now, wait a minute. I say, we shouldn't take any chances. Just of... cut the ropes. Well, I'd use a knife on him. Never mind the argument. I know what I'm doing. I hope you do. Oh. <coughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Go on. Start running. Running? I'll be lucky if I can walk. You heard me. I said run. Why, you... you're going to shoot me in the back. Run, mister. Run fast! <laughs> Back on the trail, King had warned the sergeant there was danger only a short distance ahead, and the sergeant had stopped the team. He was strong enough to walk now, only occasionally leaning on King for support, and he took to the trees at the side of the trail. He rounded a bend and saw Harry running toward him. 
Beyond Harry, near the shattered pine, Mike was leveling a rifle. The sergeant stopped, steadied himself, and took deliberate aims. This is one time we shoot first and ask questions afterwards. <laughs> Got him, gang. Mike dropped to the ground. Charlie went for his gun. Once more, the sergeant's aim was true. You're all right now, Esmond. They were going to shoot me. Yes, I gathered as much. Stay here until I make sure they can't make any more trouble. Come on, King. There was no fight left in either Mike or Charlie. Once in possession of their guns, the sergeant gave them first aid. And as full darkness fell on the forest and the northern lights flashed across the sky, he started back to Beaver City with his prisoners and Harry Esmond. When they reached the trapper's cabin, Harry could hardly believe his brother was alive. You're mighty lucky, boy. We both are, Harry. Believe me, I'll never get into another scrape like this again. You'll help me work my claim? Sure, sure. I've had enough of taking it easy. You'll have to do that for a while, Esmond. In jail, you mean, Sergeant? Well, you're wanted in Whitehorse for an attempted robbery. You guilty? Yes, and I want to square things up. That will be arranged. But you'll have your chance to go straight afterward. But as for Mike and Charlie... Oh, dirty killers. Well, it isn't up to the Northwest Mounted Police to pronounce judgment. Still, with the evidence against them, there can only be one verdict. This case is closed. In our next adventure... Rusty Rain, gang leader, is talking to the other three members of his gang about his plans for robbing the express office in Whitehorse. We'll get that gold from the express office tonight, fellas. Hey, Rusty, don't forget about Preston's being in town. Yeah. Don't worry, I haven't forgotten. I have a plan that'll lead that Mountie on a wild goose chase and make him look like a fool while we sit right in town and laugh about it. <laughs> yeah, but if he does get wise to my plan... We'll fix him and that mud of his once and for all. When the outlaw gang successfully robs the express office, it seems that Rusty's plan is going to work. But their plan goes haywire when Sergeant Preston and King, taking a cue from a blind husky, find their hideout and face their blazing guns. Be sure to hear this next exciting adventure. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created by George W. Trendle, produced by Trendle Campbell Enterprises, directed by Fred Flowerday, and edited by Fran Stryker. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. The challenge of the Yukon is brought to you every Saturday and Sunday. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye and good luck until our next adventure. This program came from Detroit. Today's most popular heroes of outdoor adventure are heard every weekday afternoon from 5 to 6 o'clock. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, Mark Trail roams the wilderness. Clyde B. defies the beasts of the jungle. And Victor Borga entertains with five minutes of musical laughs. Tuesday and Thursday, there are the Indian hero Straight Arrow riding to uphold justice. Sky King zooming to supersonic action. And Bobby Benson, the cowboy kid, in tales of western daring. Listen to Mutual's Hour for Fun with Mark Trail, Clyde Beatty, Victor Borga, Straight Arrow, Sky King, and Bobby Benson over most of these stations every weekday afternoon. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.